Uh, it's that time, three o'clock or thereabouts. So we're live. Oh, we're live already. I was just having a quick flip round. Afternoon, kittens. Wait till everybody's with us today. I'm not going to start ballsing about with people dribs and drabs. Nice sunny day. I'll pour a cup. Of... Anybody joined us yet? Mm hmm. Who's with us? Um, no one's come up, but I can tell. It's Charles is there from Spain. Hi, Charles. Are you enjoying your little tiny bit more freedom? Yeah, hi, Charles, Stephen, Lenny. Hi, Len. Samantha. Which Samantha? Aldridge. Oh, hi, Sam. You all right, Carl? Spain's opening up now, Charles said. I've heard you're opening up. I thought you was always open, actually. I was going to say you like the ever open door. Afternoon, Mark, from Nurka. I am Mark. Good afternoon, Spain. Are you enjoying your little bit of extra freedom? Is uh, I know you're not fully opened up. Happy birthday, Phil Mac. Good afternoon, my lovely Phil Mac. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phil. Happy birthday to you. Now, you see, you can't say I don't go out special for you. Not many people get that. Ah, uh, Philip's watching as well. Good afternoon. Welcome to Failsworth why, joining in. Why are you not at work? Because he's having an hour off to watch me. Oh, is he? James is watching. James Sale? Yeah. <laughs> Short, James Shanice. Hi, Shanice. Hi, Shanice. I sincerely hope, James, that he's going to work because baking soda is totally different than baking powder. Charles said he's gagging for it. <laughs> I bet you yeah. Aren't we all caught? Right now, I'm going to get some bits and pieces out. How many are with us? Phil's got his jock strap on, Shanice said. <laughs> That's nice. What a, what a vision. How many have we got with us at the moment? 30 odd. Right, we'll start then if it's at that point because. Uh, it's a quick Phil bake. Phil said thank you. No, oh, you're welcome, Phil. It's a quick bake, um, and I've actually added something to it that I've not put on the internet, so we'll go into that when we get to Hi, it. Hi, Sandra. Which Sandra? Enderson. Hi, Sandra. How are you, love? I'll get some ingredients. I'm only in the pantry. Miss Whitehead's watching. Good afternoon, Nance. How are you? So... Another sunny day as well. Right, I've already obviously. I've Mark's still there. boarded up. <laughs> Mark, you're still boarded up. So they've not let you out in Nurka yet. Another day off, Philip. You had yesterday off as well. They've let people out in um, Benel Madna for an hour a day. They're allowed to walk up the beach and things. Right, so. James uh, said it's powder, it's got no soda. What's that mean? It's what? It's powder. It's, powder. it's baking powder I've that got you need, not baking soda. Not soda. Though. Yeah, baking powder. That's what you need. Right, baking I get powder. it. Now. For God in heaven's sake. Right, I'm going to just go through a little bit of equipment first. It did do a fabulous loaf, Shanice. I've seen it. A fabulous what? Loaf. James made a fabulous loaf of yes, bread this Yes, I saw his loaf. It was very good. Right, I'm just going to go through the... Hi, Russell. You're late. You're going to need... Hi, <laughs> Russ. You're late, darling. You should have been on time. You're going to need a fork. I'm using a really big serving fork because I just think it's easiest to. And you're going to need an ice cream scoop. I've got a set, so I'm going to go for the middle one. Okay that size and a spatula and preferably you're going to need a mixer we are allowed um, in the car together from monday it is a bit hard to do without a mix oh dean you're abroad aren't you yeah so from monday they can go in pairs together because they're locked are you charlie lock their lockdowns are a lot stricter than ours that's why theirs is over quicker and of course now they're saying that things are going to change here on thursday we're going to get every skip rat and every fucking piece of scum that just decide because they've said things are slightly easier on Thursday they're all going to mob out, be visiting and the whole thing will kick off again and we'll have thousands more deaths and we'll all be locked in again so, but there again when you read things on internet and you can actually see the people who say no I can't wait to get out that tough shit, all of it right then, you're going to into your mixing bowl if anyone's got to say please don't interrupt me now while I do the amount because I'm not going to repeat it later on, last week we had everybody messaging me for how much of this and how much of that because it was constantly being interrupted with things. So while I put the amount in the bowl, listen. So we're going to start with half a cup. You're going to need cup measurements. If you've not got cup measurements, you're going to have to Google the alternative online. Just put into Google. Equivalent. Uh, convert USA cups into ounces or whatever it is you use. So this is half a cup of room temperature butter. 
preferably real butter. Don't use crap margarine or it doesn't have a nice thing. So that's half a cup of butter, half a cup of crunchy peanut butter. Yeah. Then we have half a cup of brown sugar, right, which is a packed, when you put it in your cup, pack it. And half a cup of white granulated sugar. One egg. About a heap, a good teaspoon of vanilla essence. Then it is one and a quarter cups of all purpose flour or plain flour in the UK. Okay. Then it is half a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is the one that sends everybody wacky. It's half a teaspoon of black pepper, not from a pepper mill. You don't want the one in a pepper mill that's really like the fine gross. one. You, want. you need fine table uh, pepper, black pepper, and it's half a teaspoon of that. Right, Hi everybody. So I'll keep that because I'm going to need it, and I'm going to just fire this back into here. Just sling it. I am just so I sling it over the terrace. Sling it to but the police station. It's, yeah, what it right. <laughs> So we're going to whip this into the mixer. I've halved this recipe uh, because when I normally do this, it's double the amount of that. Um, and I end up with far too much. So how many is this going to make? Uh, all depends. I mean, beans you've halved the recipe. Well, you can, you can never ever tell. It depends on how big your scoop is, how big you're going to make um, with your each cooking, to be honest with you. Put it in your mixer um, on full speed and give it a really good beat. It, it will be quite a poor I am um, Phil. Tasting into it, which I'll show you in a moment. So, any questions at what are you laughing at? Phil please? Max said I'm allowed to speak now, as I said I am. Yes, you're allowed to speak now. I can speak whenever I like, Phil, anyway. We've had words about no, it. No, you can't. We've had words about We've it. We've not had words about it at all. I've sorted you the bitch out. Yeah, don't think so. Trust me. A few slaps and it works. While that's beating, I'm just going to grab um, some cookie sheets which have lined with um, a non-stick baking parchment, okay? I've got two. Mine, okay. Della. <laughs> what? Della said, loving the hair today. And I said, mine. <laughs> she can't see mine, thank God. Which Della? Della Jackson. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sally. Sally, Sally, the pride of our alley. I'm being very, very she's, musical. She's probably been in a few alleys in her life. <laughs> More than likely, yeah. Right, you're going to need as well, which I forgot to actually say. I might do PJ one day. We need, what's PJ? I said I need to do my own show. Yeah, we need, uh, <laughs> you need a bowl of just white uh, table sugar, granulated sugar, okay? And you'll see why in a minute. Well, what sort of what? You've not what? given them a quantity of how much you to don't put in just a bowl. You need a bowl of sugar. Oh, just a bowl of sugar because you've got each one. You have to roll in sugar. So with your oh. scoop, so you get them even. Should we come closer to have. I want to see what it comes out like. It will be like that. Like a dough. Is quite, it? It's a quite firm dough. Once you've got your scoop full <laughs> in a clean hand. Make it into a ball. The reason for this, the um, ice cream scoop is because it makes every cookie the same size. When you make it into a ball, roll it into the caster sugar, uh, the granulated sugar. Okay. So while I'm continuing with this, so you're all up to speed. Yeah, right everyone's what? Everyone's watching. Black Ivory's just joined us. Good Hello, evening, daughter. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon, daughter. Of course, our Black Ivory is our lovely DJ here at the George Tavern, 42 George Street, every Saturday night when we're actually open. Are you on the gin, love? Well, um, I, got, oh, I, I saw a thing. Uh, did everybody see that thing from, um, I can't remember what puff company it is, that they're going to allow people to open, they're going to serve from beer garden? No, it's not true. So we've got a beer garden, and if it's but true... But it's not true. Is it not no. true? How do you know? Because I've heard it on the radio, someone talking on the radio. Ah. It wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, well, I'll find a way. Trust me, and I'll have that black ivory outside, screaming her tits off, playing records. 
With a gin in her hand. Yeah, well, she doesn't do anything without a bleeding gin in her hand. And Usually a, a big gin. And a tequila well. shot to follow. Yeah. So with it. Drink your house and home, she would. House and home. Hi, Kim. Hi, Julie. Hi, Susie. Loads of people, but just more more people are joining so, us. Okay. Hi, darlings. If you just joined us late, you, you'll have to watch the rerun for the recap on the amount for the thing if you're going to cook long. Okay. So keep going with you. You do. Now, what I'll do is... They're quite big, them, aren't they? Yes, because you need them to be big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do another one for on that. Eight should fit. Don't overcrowd um, your puffy tray, okay? Because they will spread slightly. Have you got more dough left in that tub, then? Yeah. In that thing? So... You could have done with a bigger tray, then, couldn't you? No. Or do you just put some more in after? I could put another tray full underneath. When you've done that with your fork, Make sure they're nicely spaced out. Don't have them hitting the sides because you'll get like a square edge, okay? Press one way with your fork, two way. Don't lift it up like I've just done. One way. Mine always lift up when I do them. Do they? Yeah. I can, I, well, I've often seen you with a do with a cookie thing lifting it up, yeah. Lifting them to your mouth. That's about the only thing you lift them with. They look like waffles. Yeah, it does get like a waffly. Potato waffles. And waffly top. What's a potato waffle? That's potato waffles. You get. You buy them. Oh, you can right. buy them frozen. They're nice. I've never heard of <laughs> such a thing in my life. I've never heard of a potato waffle. Yeah. A waffle goes in the electric waffle line, and I make. No, the these ones you can get from Iceland. The nice. Oh, I've never been in such a store <laughs> ever in my life. I'd vomit at the thoughts of it. So there you go. They're going to go in the oven now. Uh, the oven is preheated. Black Ivory likes your fork in action. Does it? Well, I'm very good at forking. Forking off. Forking here. Uh, they're going to. In, they're in a preheated oven uh, at 175, and they're going to go in for around six to nine minutes. Okay, it's a really, really quick bake. Ed is asking, can you freeze the dough? Yes, I was just going to tell you that, if you'd give me a moment. I've halved the dough for purposes of, if it's the first time you're making them, you sort of can get in a bit of a mess. Samantha's going to make them at the weekend. Now, that will make, I would say, about another six. See, Pat's has agreed with me, potato waffles, they lost. Hideous things. <laughs> I've never heard anything like, I've never heard of a potato waffle. <laughs> That will make about another six in there. I always double the recipe. So, as, as I said, I've half this. I would normally do double that amount. And then what I'm not going to bake, because unless you're going to fill the cookie jar to the brim, and then sometimes they're not as nice because they, they chew it. So if you put them in the jar, they tend to go hard. So don't overmake them. If you make a double amount, or you only want to cook a few at a time, roll that into round wrap. Uh, what do you call that in the UK? Uh, clean uh, fill. Clean fill. Roll it in that um, and then freeze it. Yeah, you're and right. And you can use it from the fridge or from the freezer. Or actually make it into the balls, open freeze them, put them in a bag, and then just bring them to room temperature, press them down, and bake them from semi frozen. Yes, you can, Jackie. What's Jackie? Want? Jackie's asking can she share this to the location group, Manchester location group? Yeah, of course. Isolation you can. group, sorry. Of course you can to what? To a group. Manchester isolation group. Oh, what? you can share all my videos, Jack. Which Jackie's asking that? Dijon. Oh, right, Jackie. Jackie, go to my YouTube channel. Just put T Terry Fox, T W R I Fox into YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel. There's about another 30 videos on there, quick bakes and everything. You can share all of them to the isolation page. I need isolation. Pat said you've never never lived because you've not had a potato waffle. Oh, um, I think I have. Kim said they're horrible. <laughs> yeah. Amir okay. said he loves them. Yes, Amir, me, me and you, Amir, will have um, a, waffle, a waffle them. breakfast Hi, one day. Amir. Oh, um, I I've never heard anything sound so revolting. Right, so okay, that is your cookie dough that's left over, which I'm going to leave to one side because we're not. We're just going to. Waffly versatile. Now, Paul said. Right, it's back to me now. We also are going to do, which I didn't put on the recipe. You can actually make them into sandwich uh, cookies, like uh, a custard cream or whatever with the cream filling in the middle, which I'm going to show you how to make. The filling is so easy; it's unbelievable. No need to even wash your, your mixer bowl because 
if you've done your dough right, the bit mix of all should come completely <coughs> clean. The whole thing should come off. What? Right, Phil. I don't know what a blue. What's a blue waffle? Phil said he prefers a blue waffle. I've never heard of a blue waffle. No, in him it'll be something filthy. It's probably been disgusting. Yeah, it? it will be something filthy. I've never heard of that in my born days. Hiya, Val. Nice of you to join us. Hiya. Which Val? Val from Sheffield. Oh, Sheffield Val Jones. Right, so we're going to make a, a cream filling to go into uh, the cookies. You could just keep them like that. That's fine. But I like to sandwich them together as well. It makes them a bit more special. So into your mixing bowl, there are three tablespoons of room temperature butter. Hi, Jason. Half a cup this time of smooth peanut butter. The other peanut butter is crunchy. You can't make the cream filling with uh, crunchy peanut butter. If you've only got crunchy peanut butter, all you've got to do is put the crunchy peanut butter into a food processor Pick the nuts and out. it will become smooth. Okay. Hiya, Sue. Uh, into that then, which Sue? Sue, Paul Sue. All right. Uh, into there now also is one full cup of confectioner's sugar, uh, icing sugar, whatever you want to call it. Castor sugar in it. No, castor sugar, don't confuse Is it, it not? Confectioner's sugar and icing sugar are the same thing. Uh, and then you want two and a half tablespoons uh, of double cream. Amir, it must be vile then. Text me, tell me what it is, Amir, by texting me, please. Does Amir know what this is? He's replied to Phil Max and he's put vile. And is it Phil Max that's, that's going on? Phil Max that said blue waffle, yeah. Oh. Do you know there's some disgusting people about them? I mean, I'm a good God fearing woman and an icon. Right. Be very careful. Not on air, Phil. When you've got Private sugar, message. <laughs> I, I have got a guard that goes on the bowl, but I've not got the guard now, so I forgot. Just cover your bowl. Just the powder will go everywhere. Like a cloud right? of icing sugar all over your house, okay? And then pulse it until. There we go. Google it. Amir nice said Google it. Google. I'm not Googling filthy things, Amir. I've got no intention to do it. So I know some disgusting people. I really do. Get that out of the way. I need to get back in that garden. Do you? Back on the terrace. I'll fill the sugar bowl up on it. Right then, so that should be it. Yeah. Phil Mac, how are you going on with, with your ciders? Have they nearly all gone yet? That was unbelievable when I saw that delivery. Absolutely ridiculous. You needed the essentials in for your birthday. You must be absolutely pissed as ass, old Jewish and he sat there, all that. Oh, Jonathan, I'll, I'll have a look at that link later. Which one? What link? It's obviously put a link to Blue, blue, blue Waffle. Who sent you this? Jonathan has. Which Jonathan? Mon Montel, Montreal. Do you know they are some... I can imagine what it's going to be. I really can. So that gives you your peanut cream filling. Okay. So we're now just waiting for them to come out of the oven and they've got to cool before we can actually fill oh, them. Oh, Phil Max said he's working his way through, sharing them with Felicia and Aidan. Oh, right. Oh, have they well, been round? Well, that's sort of thing. No, they've not been round, but they've been outside. They've, they've been, been outside. Been I've seen what? a picture of them outside. Like fairy towers. Right, so I could take my ogles off. And I told you it was a really quick bake, so we've got really time for a good chat. Afternoon, Andrew. And Mr. Robley. Good afternoon, Mr. Robley. How are you, lovey? I shall top my coffee up. Do you have any questions or anything? Because I told you it was a really quick bake today. I was going to do two things, but then last week we got, we got really complicated because people were mixing up the two recipes and God knows what else. And then I inundated amounts of stupid questions afterwards. Poor Whitehead said he loves nut butter. Yes, I thought you would. And see somebody else be filth. Nut butter? Yes, it's nut butter, isn't it? That? Yeah. No, it's not. It's a cream filling. Right, I'll get a knife while I'm waiting. Yeah, you're making me dizzy walking around. Well, yeah. Just want a table knife. Nothing fancy. So we can leave that till these come out of the oven and then they will be ready to cool. Does it taste like peanut butter or is this a silly question? Um, no, if you don't like peanut butter, the cookies will just taste like, like nuts. 
it doesn't have any connotation to peanut butter once you've used it as um, the ingredient in it. It won't taste like you're spreading peanut butter on toast or something like that, okay? Come and sit down, darling. Shanice has got a bad back from carrying, her, from carrying them up the stairs for her. Oh, bless her, poor cow. You'll have her in an early grave. She will. Let's just get me lager. <sighs> what? <laughs> what? Nothing whatsoever. So, have we got any questions or anything for like a little Would chat? Would you because... put milk in a in a bread mixture? That's from Mr. Robler. Uh, yeah, if you're going to do an enriched dough, uh, for ordinary bread, no. Uh, if you're going to do an enriched bread, which you would add milk and egg or just milk, it will make the bread a lot lighter um, and softer, a bit like a Blackpool milk roll, um, and you get an enriched dough. You would use milk if you were doing a sweet bread as well. Um, if you were doing something like a cinnamon swirl loaf or raisin bread or anything like that, you would use milk and warm milk, not water, um, and it won't last as long. I had another question online that was about bread as well and flour. No, you cannot use just plain flour to make bread. It must be strong flour. It's bread flour you use, not plain. Is there another question? Yeah, Amir said, what was the last measurement he missed it? Missed it. For what, Amir? You'd have to just... For what, darling? The cream filling or the actual cookies? Charles said he made ice cream last week. He said it was ace. Well, I bought... Chocolate and raspberries, very fast, freezing and squeezing in the bag. Well, I bought, Charles, um, a soft scoop ice cream maker online. And it arrived about two months ago uh, and I practiced with it once and it's gone in the cupboard uh, because I always wanted a soft scoop once so I could do Mr Whippy and it doesn't actually, I can't get it to work properly and I've not got a clue what I'm doing with it because when it came it didn't come with an instruction booklet, it just basically told you what to do with the machine to freeze part of it and all the rest of it. So it doesn't do what I want it to do because uh, I wanted to be able to freeze uh, fat free yoghurt and make completely you know, fat free, sugar free like sort of frozen yogurt ice cream and it don't do it phil mac so I'm is, not all happy. can shanice um is shanice not online why are you asking all the questions for her? phil mac said shanice asks if you've had highlights or is it just a good wash no it's highlights it's not just a good wash <laughs> <laughs> it's highlights love yes lucy which lucy my lucy work lucy and yeah Lu lucy work lucy, lucy. Oh, Luke, that lucy are you Brown. sue so, who I worked with. Yeah. The cream filling, Amir said. Uh, the cream filling. It Measurements. was, uh, I've got to now remember this off the top of my head. Uh, was it one cup of peanut? It's, it's three tablespoons of butter, room temperature butter, half a cup of peanut with smooth peanut butter. Um, three cups of that powder One stuff. and a quarter cups of uh, icing but sugar, confectioner's sugar and it was two and a half tablespoons of double cream, okay? If you've not got double cream, stick a couple of tablespoons of milk in, you know, at the end of the day. Not everybody has the amount of crap I have in my fridge, so it's not that stringent. But the cream just makes it softer and easier to apply with and use. But if you are gonna use it to spread and make the biscuits into biscuit sandwiches, do not put that in the fridge now because it will go hard and you'll break the cookies and you won't be able to actually um, spread Mr. Robley yeah. said because he wanted milky baps. Yeah, milky baps. <laughs> I love a milky bap, Mr. Robley. I'm just going to get a towel to open the oven. So, these should be ready to come out. Oh, they don't take long then. No, do they? I said six to eight minutes. And yes, they have. And we will take them off. Leave them on your cookie sheet for a couple of minutes, okay? I'll bring them over there, you don't have to. It's fine, I'll show them here now, look. I purposely brought a double one so I it won't on the table. <coughs> Just a couple of seconds on there. Be very gentle when you're taking them off because they don't firm up until they are cold. They're very soft. Okay? And they will break. So be nice and gentle. And it couldn't be easier. See, and I have done what I told you not to do. I've overcrowded the cookie sheet and I've got little flat edges, but who cares? So those need to go cold now before we fill them. Hi, Anita. It shouldn't take that.
I've had Lally on the phone all morning driving me insane. Absolutely insane. So I've passed Lally on to you. I've sent her your number. You can have a chat with her. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to whip them near the back door where there's a draft. To let them cool. Oh, nothing dry in this house, Luce. Nothing's what? She said it's dry Thursday for her in her house. I said nothing's dry in this house. Dry? She What's... means drinking. What's this job? Well, I don't drink. Believe that you can say fucking custard. No, I don't. I, I, <laughs> Kyle said, so I'm like, come think of what wig to wear. <laughs> Which one have you got on, love? <laughs> you got your pony on today. I never drink during the day. I used to years ago. I don't now. I've not drunk during the day for 20 odd years. More, actually. So I never drink during the day. Never alcohol. Fit, feel it a bit like that. First thing the in only the time he firms up is when it's cold. What? <laughs> So say that again. Philip said, bit like David, the only time he firms up is when he's cold. Well, that's right. Which Philip? Our Philip. Our Philip, right. Phil Mack said, David's back door's got a draft. It has not. <laughs> <laughs> it's well and truly got a draft, love. Trust me, his back door's been kicked in. So, do we have any... <laughs> what? No, nothing. Do we have any other questions? No. Nothing? No. I can't up. just sit here staring at the wall. Well, we're, up, going, we're, up, uh, we're, up, we're up to we're up to the end. So I said really, really quick bake. I should have actually done some a secondary thing with you, shouldn't I? Or what I should have done was I should have done some previous and had some Reddit that were already cold. But you see, when I do that, everybody messages me and doesn't believe the ones that I bring out and say this is one I made earlier, they don't believe I've done it. So just easy. So when they go cold, we're gonna spread the cream on one and sandwich two together. Okay. Kyle's. The other, the other thing that just interrupting you that they do make stunningly for a dessert. They make gorgeous ice cream sandwiches. So when they're cold, scoop of vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. If that's I hate chocolate ice cream, but I like vanilla. Scoop of vanilla ice cream, two cookies either side, pressed in. Most fabulous dessert. Sprinkle sugar over the top. Stunning. Kyle said he's got a lovely tight curl, Gabor, and moonlight fever. <laughs> fabulous. Now you can't go wrong, especially moonlight fever. I'm true. Phil Mac, oh, this filthy show, I love it. <laughs> it's not filthy. It's, not it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Show. There could be kids it's watching. children present. Yeah. Me. You, you're far from a child. I've just got to wipe the lipstick off the cup. This is all because I'm not wearing MAC lipstick at the moment. I'm wearing Yves Saint Laurent lipstick and it drives me insane because it comes off on everything. I hate it. Kyle sent a laughing emoji. Um, Charles said, will you do another performance with Basil Brush one night? Yes, while I've got you all, He's we dead. will be live on Sunday with the show on stage here at the George Tavern, 42 George Street, Oldham. Um, we didn't do last week or the week before because I had a touch of laryngitis. My friend Andrew Robley, who's a singer as well, will tell you. And um, it's a no-no if you've got laryngitis. I have swollen glands and everything. So it was a bit bad. And I didn't want to strain my voice and wreck it, even though I'm not coming anywhere to perform. Um, so this week we will be live on Sunday evening at 8 to 8.15. I will let you know. Because there's nothing on the telly, is there? So we may as well do that. We'll do a show and I'll wear something nice. I might be there if I'm not too busy. Well, no, well, you could be out somewhere. I, I might where be, you're going. Yeah. I don't know yet. Where could you go? It's nowhere open. <laughs> not a place open, nothing. I might find somewhere to oh, go. Boarded up. Parks are boarded up. Everything's boarded up. Do you still see girls from the Hollywood show, show bar days? Yes, I do. I see my Felicia, my daughter Felicia. I see <laughs> Miss J. Charles. <laughs> um, I occasionally see Sandra. Who's who's asked that? Dean. Dean Michael Clark. Dean Michael Clark, yeah. I see quite a few. There are about three or four of them. We have a Christmas due every year. I see Felicia on a weekly basis. Um, I also speak to her every day, um, and Jay I speak to her, uh, quite a lot, and we see each other on our do's and nights out. Um, we've lost um, three, three girls have uh, passed away in the last two weeks, actually, from the show of our days, and of course Julia as well last year. Um, so yeah, there's, there's few of us left now. But yeah, I do keep in touch. Charles said every time he goes to Benidorm he gets swollen glands. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Max said, where do you do your food shop? Who said? Max. Max. Uh, where do I food shop? 90% <coughs> Aldi. 
I'm a great believer in cut price supermarkets. Aldi is Aldi's the number one supermarket. Aldi's it's not cut price at all. It's still a cut price supermarket. But it's the number one supermarket. It's the number one by Wix magazine. Um, but I always shop at Aldi for everything because I do have the opinion. A lettuce no, you can't is a lettuce, sell. a tomato is a I'm tomato. I'm not dressed. Flour is flour. You know, sugar is sugar. I always shop in Aldi for everything, all my basics like that. Um, and then I do sort of two or three other supermarkets for things that they don't happen to sell. Um, I use Tesco's, Morrison's, Asda, those three. Um, Tesco's drive me insane because I'm sure they get that pricing gun and they just walk around and think, oh, I know what we'll do, we'll make this price up. And Sainsbury's as well, <sighs> fucking ridiculous. Pardon me. Prices are absolutely bizarre. Um, meat and things like that I buy from my butcher, but of course during lockdown we've not been able to do that. So um, I've been buying meat from Sainsbury's, Tesco's and Aldi. Okay? Because I've not been able to do that. I don't really do... Um, things like Iceland and things like that because I don't buy anything absolutely zero that is ready made or processed or anything only waffles I've never heard of those things it's absolutely the most disgusting thing I've ever heard of but I don't have anything in my fridge I'm going to buy some and let you have some you are not I like them with beans and eggs oh my They're god nice. that sounds revolting um, I don't have anything that's cooked or processed you couldn't actually stand in our house and go oh I'll shove something in the microwave and just ping it can't do that. I always cook at a time. Like, I will prove a point I eat today from 6 a.m. this morning when David got up, he turned the, the um, crock pot, the slow cooker on for me. Um, and I'd already prepped it last night and hidden away in a bowl is tonight's and a half dinner. Hour cut chili. So we're having chili for dinner with um, homemade corn muffins. Because so, we don't serve chilli with rice, it seems to be the only English... That I want rice for mine, please. Well, you And not. chips. You've never had that before, so don't... Rice and not. chips, I want. Oh and some bread and butter. Oh, dear God. I'd have heart attack. What's Phil Max say? Can I have a smile from David for my birthday? No. <laughs> Unfortunately. I'm on, I'm on... I've been painting. My hair's a sight. I've got no top on. And I've probably got paint all over my face. You have so I'm not hair turning hair. the camera around. Darren Bibb... <laughs> Hiya Darren, nice to see you. Hiya Darren, you're all right, love. Max said, started using Lidl, it's really good. I used yeah, to go I to used... Aldi, but Lidl is a lot quick, quieter too at the same sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's quieter. Um, I, the thing is, we, I love Lidl, don't get me wrong, because when we lived in Spain... Own more... bargain, Sandra, I love own bargain. <laughs> for more years, um, we lived in Spain for more years than I've lived in the UK. I used Lidl there all the time. So when I first came... Hi here, Nicola. Lidl in the UK wasn't the same as Lidl in Spain, so I couldn't find anything, so I went to Aldi and I got used to Aldi. And then when I went in Lidl, I couldn't find anything I wanted and I was buying things that I didn't really need. And also, I didn't have a Lidl near me. So that's, that's one of the things that doesn't help. What There you, you go, doing? Phil Mac, just for you. What have you done? It's a cookery programme, not for Phil Mac to look at your chest. <laughs> he said even better, with no top on. Oh, for God's sake. We're supposed to be doing afternoon cookery. We're talking about me. No, we're not. We were talking about um, Lidl. Go on. Sandra said I'll shop at Aldi and Home Bargains, yeah? Yeah, look, Aldi. I like Home Bargains. Home Bargains, just, fabulous. I've just got used to Home Bargains and I like it, but I've never bought food from there. Good afternoon, Chris Conway. Hi, Chris. The, the coffee you recommended is fab from Aldi. Yeah, best coffee ever is the Aldi one, ever. It's, Kyle said the Chinese you made the other night was stunning. It was stunning, actually. Yeah, that was nice. It looked stunning. <coughs> a very rarely cut... <coughs> a very rarely cut Nicola, Chinese did you like that? <laughs> very rarely cut Chinese food, to be honest, true, because I never think it tastes like <coughs> it does from a Chinese restaurant. Um, but that was that was quick and very easy and nice, so... An Argos. Um, she likes an Argos. Well, Nicola does. Nicola's, well, she's the Argos queen. Mm. So uh, I might do the fried rice recipe with you one day um, because it's really, really quick and really, really easy to do. So I might actually do that on one of the cookery shows because I keep getting asked to do savoury things. Then when I do a savoury thing, somebody wants something sweet, so I can't please everybody. See, I've made Phil Max Day now. Oh, I'm thrilled for it. Lovely, he said. Made my day. Yeah. Anything else? What, um, Jason, Paul Jason said, what's yeah. the best way to make salad dressing? Depends on what salad dressing you want, my darling. It's, it's you know, if it's going to be an oil and vinegar dressing, I always use an old jam jar and tip everything in the jam jar, screw the lid on and shake it. I never use a whisk. Just buy salad cream. It never goes, oh. Just buy some salad cream, okay, Jason, no. for Depends fuck's on sake. Depends on what dressing you're going to make. You know, I tend to make some dressings up at the beginning of the week and a lot of my dresses are fat free because I use yoghurt based dressings, obviously because I'm trying to lose weight yet again. 
Do we have any more questions? No, no, that's it. No more questions. No, that's it. So don't forget, join us on. Um, I'm only waiting for these puppies to cool and then we'll film them. Uh, don't forget, join us on Sunday live from the stage in the George Tavern, 42 George Street, Oldham. I might have a drink. Full live show. I think we'll both have a drink on Saturday. Sunday. Could, Sunday. We should get good like, legless pump we like we did last. I can't time. while I'm doing the show. Why? I just can't. Why not? Jason said every time he makes salad dressing, he makes it wrong. We're well, doing some. Jason, just buy some salad cream. But it depends on what salad dressing you're making, Jason. You can't just ask me salad dressing because there's a thousand salad dresses from, you know, ranch to French to, you know, it goes on and on and on. English. Like mayonnaise, you know. Spanish, honey, Italian. You know, honey, honey mustard. I could reel them off to go on and on and on. So it depends on what salad dressing you're actually making. I would have to know which one it is you're trying to make and tell me why it's going wrong. If you're doing an oil and vinegar and mustard dressing, it's just even quantities and in a jar and shake it really well, but it will separate if you leave it in the fridge, you need to reshake it. Sandra, I'll just buy some, it's easier. What you do? You won't buy some No, at Sandra all. said get Terry to make some waffles. I'll just buy some. He doesn't like um, breakfast waffles. I'll taste, the potato waffles are nice. Potato, I'm not, I'm not I have them every Sunday. Make waffles. I've, don't, I've never heard of potato things in my life. Um, and ordinary waffles, I adore. Oh, I Nick, adore Nick, waffles and bacon for breakfast. Love it. But the hips don't love it. <laughs> James, <laughs> James said he's just turned into a cake. <laughs> it's turned into a cake. <laughs> How has it turned into a cake? Have you purposely made it into a cake? Is it? Has it become runny or what, James? If it's become runny, you've put too much of something in that's liquid. There shouldn't be any liquid in there. Until he replies, Nicholas said, have a drink for a change. <laughs> Are you drinking tomorrow for VE Day or celebrating in any way? I'm putting my St George flags up, up the window, Nicola, again, like I did for my birthday. The trouble is, we would, we would do something outside the pub even though we closed, but because we're the centre of town, there's nobody passing Nobody will see it anyway. Nobody sees it because the whole of the town is completely empty. Only the junkies. And there's no chunkies. <laughs> no um, so there's nobody going to see it, but I'll certainly be watching things. If we'd have been open, I'd actually planned on doing BE Day, the whole thing with a fancy dress party. and I was going to have a, um, tables of food outside, like a street party. I was going to do the whole thing. I was really looking forward to it, so I'm quite disappointed we're not going to it. James is starting all over again. Um, I'll start all over again when you post the video. Andrew Robles. Right, James, James, tell me what's gone wrong. Is it runny? Is, it, is, is your mixture runny? It's, I need to know. I can't, you can't just tell me it's turned into a cake. How's it turned into a cake? Have you actually baked them? Have they, what? It's, if you tell me, I can tell you what you've done wrong. Mr. Robley said he's got an ice cream machine with an instruction booklet, if that's any use. It, it'd have to be the same booklet, it'd have to be the same machine as mine after the show, Andrew. I'll photograph mine and send it to you. Yours will probably be a really expensive one, mine wasn't, it's a cheapy one. A Mr. Whippy one with like a handle so you could do cornets that are, you know. I oh, they've to... expanded and merged together. Oh, right, that's okay. It's just you've made the balls too big and they've it doesn't matter. Just, together. Just, just let them split, cool. they'll split come, them, separate them. Out fine. Just take them off your tray, put them on your wire rack. You'll just have funny shapes. They're still going to taste the same, aren't they? The same. If they've spread, it just means the balls are too big and they're too close together. That's the only reason. Mine spread, but I kept them quite spaced out. Look. Nothing worse than having balls close together. And there's nothing worse than your balls spreading on a trend. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, so Mr. Robley, yours will probably be a really expensive flash ice cream maker that makes gorgeous sorbets and things. Not like mine. I wanted to be like Blackpool Seafront and do Mr. Whippies and 99s yeah. and things. But... Because <laughs> I don't like hard ice cream and I don't like expensive ice cream either. I only like I'm, flakes with mine. I'm quite Philistinish like that. I don't like expensive chocolate. Hiya, Suzanne. And I don't like expensive ice cream. I'm Chloe like, in bed. I don't like ice cream with lumps in it neither. What, what are those called? Like Ben and Jerry's and things like that. I can't stand Oh, no, it. I like them. No. I like soft scoop ice cream runny from a machine and, you know, strawberry or vanilla. That's the only two I like. That's stand hard ice cream. I have to whip it up in a bowl. Suzanne, is Chloe having a little afternoon nap? Then it's your turn, isn't it? Right, I'll just see if these are cold. Let's see if they're cold. The oh, I can't. We are... Mr. Robley said, I spread because my balls are too big. Oh, that's why. <laughs> if your balls are very big, it will spread. They just want a couple more minutes to cool. And then we'll sandwich them together before the end of this the show. This is getting a different adult show. This should be after the watershed. It should. We should do an after the watershed cookery programme with balls spreading everywhere. 
But there again, it depends on how you interpret it. You know, it's a little bit double entendre. It's only people with dirty minds that would actually think of something, mm, Phil. Like Phil Mack. Yeah. So, do we have any other questions? No. Want to ask me? Oh, I had a question, by the way. I got a question sent to me. What was the worst thing I've ever eaten? And I forgot. So sorry. I forgot who actually sent it me. And it's somebody who is watching, because I've heard your name and I can't remember. I got a message earlier on saying, what is the worst thing you've ever eaten? Um, and this will make you laugh. It was cat shit. Two things I've eaten in my life that were bad, and I'll tell you the reason why, and it really was. Uh, about 30 odd years ago, <laughs> yeah, Charles. I actually had a cat, and I'd been making Christmas cake. It was, it was near Christmas, I'd made Christmas cake, so we've got all the currants and the raisins and things. And what I thought was a, a raisin on the floor, near the kitchen door, I actually picked up and popped in my mouth. And when it was in my mouth, I realised it was, it was a little bit of cat shit the cat had brought in in its paw. Nice, that. So I'd ate that. And then another Christmas, I'd had a Christmas party on Christmas Day night, um, and I'd had um, a pate in the shape of a pig in the middle of the table, you know, all dressed out, it's gorgeous pate. And the next day, everybody was clearing up for me in the kitchen, and I went into the kitchen, as you do, slightly hungover on Boxing <laughs> Nick, Day. Nick, I knew you'd like that. And I, I saw <laughs> on the side of the counter a big piece of pate, and I thought, oh, I'll have that, and I grabbed a cracker, spread it on it and popped it in my mouth and when it went into my mouth I realised it wasn't pate it was chappy dog food <laughs> where, where my friend Shelley had Ugh. fed the dog chappy and it was chappy dog food so it tasted <laughs> like sour fish and was pasting all over my mouth and I put it young go but I was eating running all over and I had staff Nicola be eating now as well I had staff doing things in there they looked at me like I was insane I'm running out the back of the house eating all over the floor they were the two worst things I've ever eaten chappy dog food you catch Dean Ellis is dying in his head. So that is gospel truth. So, you know, no point if I'm lying and flying, you know, you couldn't make that up, could you really? Honestly? I don't think I've, I've, I don't think I've ever ate anything like that. What? Catch it? Yeah, no, I wouldn't even want to. No. Well, I didn't go out purposely and thought, oh, I know what I'll do. No, I'll anything that I thought was normal but wasn't, do you know what I mean? You thought it was, you're not eating something that you thought was something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've yeah, realised yeah. it no. wasn't that. Only certain things go in my mouth anyway. Mm. What's this question from Mark? Which Mark? Ketcher. No, come on. The higher fat content, I eat more egg yolks and full fat cream, smoother and softer your ice cream. Yes, I know that, Mark, yeah. The more, the more fat content in it, the smoother the ice cream comes. But the whole point of me buying this ice cream maker, I would have shown it you, but I've got it, it's right at the back of the pantry. Um, the reason I bought it was, was because I had in my head I could actually, because I won't eat ice cream because it's too fattening, and when I start to eat ice cream, I can't stop. I'll be t totally honest with that, you know. I could, those great big machines that are on the Blackpool Sea Club with the handle on it, I could lie underneath it with my mouth open, seriously. Um, so I just don't eat ice cream at all. So I bought the whippy machine thinking that I could just use pure natural yoghurt, artificial sweeteners, uh, well, I don't use artificial sweetener. It's a natural sweetener. It's a natural sugar that's completely um, calorie free. And then use flavorings in it so that I actually got a flavored soft whip ice cream. And I put it all together and you take the center out and you freeze the center, then put it back in the machine, turn it on and go around. Well, I think I don't, I don't know whether I froze it too long because as I put the yogurt into it, it just went like one hard lump and wouldn't move and it wouldn't wick. And, and when I was trying to look online, it was telling me that I, I can't do that. I've got to add cream to it. And so anyway, that was it. So it's a wasted piece of equipment, which years ago, I used to be obsessed with kitchen equipment. Anything that was electrical appliance, I had to have it from electric frying pans, and not just food processors and things, you know, uh, machines that you pulled down and did things and pie making machines, absolutely ridiculous. Sort of a big thing, wasn't it, in the 80s? And the kitchen had that many electrical appliances in it. And in the end, I thought, I don't even use them. So I binned it all. But the ice cream maker, I think, is just one of those things that's not going to work at them. Um, Russell said, please can I ask, what is the best way to make a meringue? Mine always seems to go very flat. Any advice you could give? Yeah, you're not whipping the, you're not whipping the egg white fast enough or long enough. Again, go to my YouTube Russell, channel. Russell, you need good wrist action. You do, Russ. Go to my YouTube channel, uh, Terry Fox YouTube, and go on to the cookery program there. Subscribe to it, please, if you've not subscribed. And on there, Russell, you'll find a little meringue recipe that will give you the, the meringue consistency. That is a, depending on it, if it's a meringue you want to bake meringue, you've not told me that. If it's a baked meringue, it's slightly different than a meringue you would put on top of a meringue pie. 
okay? But usually it's because you've not whipped it fast enough and long enough, or you've put the sugar in <coughs> too quick. If you log the sugar in in one go, it will deflate the, the meringue. You must put it in a little bit at a time so the sugar melts. And always put your finger through it and feel if it's gritty between your fingers, that means the sugar's not beaten out and melted enough. And that will make the meringue drop as well. Okay. Um, Nicola's asking, have you ever made salted caramel ice cream? No. In a word, no. I've oh. never made ice cream, apart from buying this machine. This is the whole thing. I've never, um, and I don't, and I like salted caramel flavoured stuff, but it, I don't think it's caramel, I don't think it's salty enough. I want it to be really salty with a sweet oat because I actually like chocolate cake. I do um, a lot of old school, not old school, as in old school, school dinner recipes. Um, and I used to love at school, you used to get chocolate sponge cake with mint custard oh yeah custard, and i loved it and i make that mean david quite a lot i could tell by my hips um i'm used to school, din school like dinners the chocolate I cake i actually like salt on it i like salt on chocolate cake so you're getting that sort of like sweet and sourish like um the salted caramel same thing but it's never salty enough for me dean mcgrath mcgrath now this will be this i'm gonna imagine you're looking very able... well indeed like you've been swang swang Swang, swanging. Swinging. Swinging. Well, if it is, it's spelt it wrong. Yeah, well. Around the Mediterranean on that boat you won in Bullseye in 1987. Well, as a matter of fact, I was about to go on that. When I was on Bullseye, it was 1986 actually, Dean. And um, it was a dinghy. And I had it extended. And uh, if we were able to fly, I would be on my boat around the Mediterranean right now. I do like it. Um, Russell said, yes, baked. Thank you. It was sub subscribe. Right, subscribe. So if it's a baked meringue that you want to fill as hard meringues, that's a slightly different um, quantities to it. But the principle is exactly the same as on the lemon meringue pie. And if it's deflating as well, when it goes in the oven, if you're going to dry it, your oven needs to be on very, very low, no more than like 125. Put the meringue in for about two hours and then turn the oven off completely, but do not open it. Leave it in the oven to dry out, then you will get a crisp <coughs> meringue that will dry out. Raymond said, a mouthful of salty stuff, dear. We can't go wrong. Gary said, not go wrong. Gary Barlow, he made a Victoria sponge yesterday and was so proud of it, then he dropped it on the floor. He said, I was livid. Oh, I've done that. Gary, three second rule, pick it up straight away, love. It's I your floor, it should be clean. So so many times I baked something and I thought, oh, that looks absolutely fabulous. Especially stuff I photographed for you. Um, and if I made something, I did it a few weeks ago and I made the most beautiful apple pie. And as I put it onto the dish to photograph it, I turned round, caught the side of my arm on it, whipped the dish off, broke the dish, smashed the pie all over the floor, which puts me in a foul mood. So uh, Afternoon, I Shirley. Like Shirley Airport. Shirley. My Shirley. Yeah. Hello, Shirley. How are you, love? Are you keeping well, Shirley? I so, hope so, I'm going to check these. You get your biscuits. And I think they will be, yeah, they're sort of, they're not exactly stone cold. Don't, leave mine just like that. They're cool enough. Without any filling. Let's grab. Okay, well, I'll bake some more afterwards. Well, do I have one now? Yeah, but I want you to try one with filling. I can't be filling before. I don't want filling on there. I don't want, I can't eat double one like that when I'm holding a camera. You're fine. No, I can't. Just to see. I don't really like peanut butter anyway, do I? You know I don't. It doesn't taste a peanut butter, you fool. But this one has got crunchy right, peanut so butter in. You smooth two together. Flatten them down like that. Egg, well, I'll egg. have one of these ones here. Go on then, take them. Okay, so as I said, have them like David does, just plain if you mm. want. But with the filling in. It tastes like potato waffles, these. <laughs> With the cream in is absolutely divine. I have got to say, utterly divine. Gary Barlow said, yeah, floor is clean. I was in a mood the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, I've do, done exactly the same myself loads of times. So there you go. Couldn't be simpler. So obviously if you're gonna sponge them together, you're not gonna have as many cookies. Yeah? Nicholas said, I do miss when you used to bring biscuits and cakes into work. Never forget that coconut cake. Oh, God. <laughs> My famous coconut cake. That's one thing I won't be making on here. For one, the complication of it. And for two, it's a very, very Hi, recipe. Hi, Sybil. Hi, Sybil. Blackpool's joining us. The lovely Sybil from Peekaboo's in Blackpool. If you're ever in Blackpool, when we reopen everywhere, 
Get yourself to Peekaboo, fabulous cabaret on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday night in there. Packed out the doors, busiest bar in Blackpool. Loved your hair, by the way, Sid. Thought you looked fabulous. Loved it yesterday, yeah. Yeah, thought you looked fabulous. And I liked your slap as well, thought it looked lovely. Quite very natural and glamorous. Itching to know what you're filming around Blackpool, though, for Facebook. You're not, you're not plumbing how you to be the mayoress of Blackpool. I can see you as the mayoress with the chain on. Low cut tops. Might be a private film. It could be, not at Sybil's age. <laughs> she won't be doing private. I'm just going to grab some coffee. No, turn your camera around so you're not just facing a wall. I'm just going to grab some coffee. Sybil wouldn't be filming dirty films at her age. She's well past all that now. A bits and pieces won't be all neat and tidy. Doing things like that. So do we have any more questions? I can't see. Oh, you can't see. We'll come back. Mm. So you see, when everybody gets worked up about making cookies and things... Hiya, Sarah. the simplest, simplest thing to make. Sister's it's watching. Hiya, Sarah, my lovely sister-in-law, Sarah. You just got up. Yeah, I bet she has. Um, it's, you've got to make sure your oven temperatures are right. Kyle's dying at these, he said. Never use the taste cold, all right. cold ingredients, by the way. If, if it says room temperature, it must be room temperature. Don't keep eggs in a fridge. You know, they don't come out of a chicken's gonga into a fridge, do they? They come out of a chicken's gonga into a nest. Chicken's what? Gonga? Yeah. Arsehole, you mean? Don't say such filthy things in the afternoon. So, uh, don't keep them in the Mayor's fridge. chain's not big enough, Sybil said. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to have a new one done, Sid, full of rhinestones and every... I could see you as the mayoress. You'd be like Audrey Roberts in Coronation Street when she was the mayoress. Really big hats and the gold chair. It, just, it, just, it would suit you down to the ground, Sid. And then she said, what do you mean, my age? <laughs> well, you, you won't be making dirty films at your time of life. You're well past Well, Sarah's, now, dr Sarah's drinking and sunbathing. It's quite overcast here today, actually. Yeah, well, it wasn't before. It's gone overcast now. I know. <laughs> it's five to four. Man, you're there again yesterday. It was really sunny at six o'clock. The root terrace, we get sun <coughs> all day. I need so another never, can. Never really goes cold. So, we're sort of at the end of the hour. Um, anything else quick before we go? No, that's it. We're up to, we're up to everybody. Right, so don't forget to join me and David on uh, Sunday night between 8 and 8.15. Live from the George Tavern, 42 George Street, Oldham. On stage, full show. I'll wear something extremely expensive. Happy VE Day for tomorrow, everybody. And yeah, I'll pop something on for VD Day. Yamas. Yamas, Sarah. Did you hear what I've just said? Yeah. For VD Day. It's yeah. VD Day. So for VE Day, we'll, like, we'll pop something on for VE Day tomorrow. I might sit there dressed as Vera Lynn with my left cap hanging out. So uh, yeah, Sunday we've got a live show. Um, and we will put Skippy in it because everybody's asking for Skippy again. So I'll bring Skippy's, you know, he's all right. We've just wormed him. So he'll be okay to go on stage. So thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, make sure <coughs> if you make the cookies, you send me photographs, post them directly to my page. Don't get worried, by the way, if you post something to my page and it says it, it doesn't go on, I do see it and then I release them. It's just you can't post directly to my page because I have a lot of kids and people are posting filthy things. So that's why you can't post direct, but you can tag me in it and I release the tags, you know, at some point during the day. So if you're gonna make them, please make sure you send the photograph. I'd love to see what they look like. Because everything everybody else has made so far that you've copied the recipe, it's all come out because I tried to make it so easy for you that you can't go wrong. And I'm thrilled that everybody's baking and cooking and following along. So, we're going to bid you good day. Goodbye, everybody. Day. Stay safe. Stay tra, and we will see you live on Sunday between 8 and 8.15, live on stage at the George Tavern, 42 George Street, <coughs> Oldham, with our new glittery walls. See you then. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye.